Hello and welcome back to my nail corner. I have a fun mani. This is one of my recent faves to share with you guys. I am using Gigi's Custom Dips products today. I have her dip liquids out and she also just sent me her brand new gel liquid. So that there is a gel primer. This is a gel base. She also sent me over a gel no wipe top coat and additionally a gel matte top coat. I haven't tried the matte yet except on a swatch and it was beautiful so I'm excited to try that out. I really love like the summer brights in a matte color so even this color swatch you're seeing down there might try that in the future matte. I was tempted to leave I'll, well, I'll talk about that later. Anyway, this is a builder gel also she sent over. I believe she is releasing a handful of new builder gels on the, I want to say, 9th. Don't quote me. I will put it in the description box if I see a formal date for that. But I believe July 9th, she's going to have a release of builder gels. So that is a really pretty one. I'm going to pop a picture in here showing the swatches that one um, builder gel is shown there. It's really beautiful, like pearlescent, and I can't wait to wear it because I have been shying away from jelly tips lately and have been doing builder gel over my natural nails, and I've been really loving that. So that... Uh, pearlescent color would be a beautiful base to wear underneath my dip powder so when I pop that dip powder off I still have a beautiful mani um, so I'm gonna go ahead in with the dip base I really like Gigi's uh, customs dip liquids they're really nice and thin which is how I prefer it um, if you watched my first uh, impressions of these dip liquids a while back the activator I always thought activator is activator is activator, but the activator, it cured the dip so quickly. I don't know what kind of magic is in there, but I, I applied the activator and then they were hardened by the time I got to like my fifth nail. They were all cured and ready to file. So that's crazy fast. Anyway. I'm going to go ahead in with my regular dip process for this nice solid color. It reads a little bit more, I mean right there I feel like it's fairly true to color to what I'm seeing, but um, in pictures I feel like these like like bright pink corals can sometimes look a little bit more red almost, like a vibrant bright neon red than what they are in real life they're just i just have a hard time photographing them i don't know maybe it's just me but this is a really nice bright neon coral and i was living for it so i had recorded this video probably a month ago now Ooh, you guys i'm so behind but um now i have a little bit more of a tan going on and i really want to wear this color again because i think it's going to go even better with my skin tone but i do love like the neon with my skin tone you guys hear me talk about that a lot like I struggle to go like does this look okay with my olive skin tone and if I'm being honest like most colors turn out just fine um, but there are just a few that I feel like make me look more like yellow or green or I, I don't know what I maybe it's all in my head but anyway, so this is a really beautiful color. I found it applied really nice and smoothly. Um, also, I should mention, this is a Canadian brand. So if you're up in Canada looking for a good brand to shop, uh, tech, check out Gigi's Custom Dips. I will link everything in the description box. So the website, I will list the colors that I used uh, and so on and so forth as per usual. So I really highly recommend the brand. I will talk about the gels a little bit more later when I use them, but spoiler alert, I loved the new gels. So I, I messaged her right away after I did this mani. I sent a picture um, and I was just like, you killed it because the gels are so, so good. So I definitely recommend that. Those are HEMA free as well. So um, if that means nothing to you, then don't worry about it, but just a quick education from from like what I know which is very base level is that a lot of people that find themselves having a reaction to gel products um, it's often the HEMA in the gels so I don't even know what HEMA is so I'm not a chemist so don't ask me but a lot of gels um, have HEMA in them and more and more um, small brands are coming out with HEMA free gels which I just think is great because the more I guess 
safe of a product we're using, the less likely you are to end up with allergies from it. Um, now, just a minute to talk about these glitters. Oh my gosh. So this one, and then the, if you saw the, the shot I put in of the swatches earlier, there was like a, like a minty teal one. They're so unique. I had never worn, um, a glitter quite like this one. And I'm going to try to show you up close what I'm talking about, but these are, they're like, um, like a matte glitter with like, um, I don't know how to explain it, like almost like a honeycomb or something pattern on the actual hex glitter. So I'm gonna grab a couple and hold them up to the camera and it'll go in and out of focus, but hopefully in the focused moments, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So this glitter mix has like pink and corally kind of glitters and you're gonna see, because I happen to grab one of each, you can see the little bit of difference there. So one's more orange, one's pink. But do you see what I'm talking about? How they're like, they're matte and then they have like a, a texture, texture to them. They're so easy to work with, you guys. I did um, this full uh, glitter nail on my index finger. You'll see, I just press tap them down like I normally would, but just beautiful, easy, smooth coverage. So I highly recommend grabbing some of these while you're shopping because they're so unique. Uh, like I said, I have a lot. I've never even counted. I have a lot of dip powder, you guys. I'm, I'm scared to count. I'm like taking over an entire room in our house. It's becoming excessive. However, I don't have anything like these in my collection. So that's a rare thing for me to be able to say. And so yeah, if you don't have these, worth checking out if you like the way that they looked because I think that they turn out really cool. And like I said, very easy to work with. They were really flexible. And even though I always clear cap a Manny, these are glitters that I felt um, confident in saying if you filed into one accidentally, they're not going to be like silver on the inside from what my experience was. So that just gives you a whole new level of like safety in filing a chunky glitter. But you can kind of tell hopefully how smoothly they just padded down and I, I just don't have enough words to say how much I love this glitter. So definitely check that out if you're into um, just a chunky glitter that's easy to work with. Okay, so now we are going to get into some ombre techniques. I love a good ombre. Uh, glitter ombre tips are one of my favorite looks, but I also love a solid ombre, but I have struggled in the past to just get it right or like be happy with how it turned out, like the fade from the one solid to the other. So we're gonna talk about that in just a second here. But first on this nail, we are going to do a glitter tip ombre, which you've probably seen me do before for, but bear with me. So I like to use this brush. It's called, it's a wet and wild um, eyeshadow brush. They're like a dollar on Amazon last time I checked, but I've had this brush and I have a handful of them for years and years and years and they hold up really well. So I just load up the brush with the glitter and then tap it onto the nail. Now the closer you are to the nail, the more precise your glitter placement is going to be and the further up you hold the brush away from your nail the more sporadic so if you want it more controlled then hold it a little bit closer to the nail but i'm not actually touching the nail i'm just tapping the brush to get it on to fall off onto the nail that i've applied dip base to and then i like to use a spoon like you just saw you can use whatever you have handy to um, pour over my clear dip to just fill in that space that I did not apply glitter to. So that's gonna give me a clear base. Now my clear base of my nail is gonna look a little bit different because I have a light pink builder gel on my nail already. So if you're doing clear, it's gonna look a lot more um, transparent if you just have your, your bare nails. But um, the base that I have is pink lace builder gel from Manny Boss and that that gave a really nice background to these ombres. So I'm going to use a brush again to go ahead and apply this solid to the tip of my nail. And this is gonna be a little bit of a, like a mix of technique and I'll explain that in just a second. But this would be what we call, I guess, a tap ombre. And so you're really just kind of tap, tap, tapping that brush that's loaded with powder. And I kind of rotate my hand um, that had like the 
I'm doing my nails on like so in this case my left hand I rotate it kind of side to side just to make sure you get all of the area and then I'm gonna do the same thing here with the clear and just kind of tap it off of that spoon on to my nail you can use a brush if, if you prefer but I'm just kind of pouring it over so to speak and so I let that set for just a couple of seconds to make sure it absorbs into the dip base and then just kind of tap it off like so now I'm gonna take that brush that I already used for the solid and I'm gonna kind of now that the dip base is a little bit more set you go in gently at first but I'm just kind of scrubbing with that same brush so what you're doing there is going to just blend so I'm going side to side along that line so from that vibrant pink to the clear and this can work you, you really I think it works best if you have like a lighter color and then a more pigmented colors it doesn't have to be clear it could be anything um, but even with two kind of more vibrant colors if you're just kind of going along the middle of that line there you're gonna blend those pigments in together and I've just I found that this turned out in my humble opinion I was really pleased with how this ombre turned out so you can see for yourself in the end and if if you like the way that it turned out and you're somebody who has struggled with a solid ombre like I have in the past then maybe try this out just give that little extra time um, for the dip base to set a little bit and then just scrub and you can kind of see how it's how the pigment is staining the lighter color as you go so it just allows you a little bit more control in my opinion so I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my second layer of glitter I'm also gonna do some placement of glitter at the end of this and I'll leave that in so you can see um, but basically when you're doing a glitter ombre and you use the brush the brush mostly will pick up the finer smaller glitters and so if you want the chunkier glitters on your nail then I highly recommend just individually placing them after you're you're done with your ombre so I'll leave that in and you can see how I do that I just apply dip base and then use an orange wood stick to just individually place the glitters where I want them before I clear encapsulate so I'm gonna go ahead and do the second layer on this solid nail I'm gonna blend that in add the chunky glitters and then we're gonna clear cap now again if you're new here thanks for being here um, the reason I clear cap is to protect not only the pigment from me filing it off but the design I just created so if you create a nice ombre and you're real happy with it and then you go to file your nail you may file off some of that color or the design if you did any kind of design or French manicure additionally um, if you have glitter on your nail and you file that in most cases chunky glitters especially are silver on the inside so you're gonna file off the color of that glitter so I like to clear encapsulate every mani I do and that just gives me a nice buffer for my filing there are other perks and benefits to it but I've talked through those so many times that hopefully you've heard them in the past but I highly recommend a clear cap if you want to protect your mani from filing and buffing so I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys watch as I finish this up and then I will file off camera and then I'm going to come back and talk about gel.
Okay, so I went ahead and filed and buffed and now we are going to get into our top coat. So I have the no wipe top coat and the gel base. Now, if you're using a gel top coat over your dip powder, I highly recommend going in with a gel base first. Um, at minimum, a gel primer, but I, I prefer gel base. I find it's like my surefire way to keep my top coat from peeling. Now, the reason you might have gel peeling is because gel top coat does not like to adhere to a smooth surface. So we've just like buffed and filed and made those nails nice and smooth because that's how I want them to look, but your gel top coat would tend to peel off of a smooth surface. So gel base is that layer that's gonna act like your double-sided tape. Uh, it's gonna stick to the dip powder, but it's also gonna help your gel top coat adhere. So I, I always recommend doing a layer of gel base curing for 30 seconds and then going in with your gel top coat to prevent any peeling from happening. Now, to talk about these gels specifically, I love them. I have all good things to say. They were a nice thin application, but not runny. So if you've ever used a gel that's really thin and then it like ran into your cuticle line and your sidewalls, that was not my experience with this at all. It had a really nice consistency. Um, just very smooth application and like I said not not runny so I definitely recommend checking out these gels if you are in the market or shopping on the Gigi's Customs website super smooth really nice application hopefully you can tell that here I know sometimes it's hard to tell like consistency of a product um, by like video but I just tried to kind of show you and then also tell you my experience so I was really really happy with these so now I have my gel base on I'm gonna go ahead and cure for 30 seconds in my UV LED combo lamp and now we're gonna go in with the gel top coat it's the same application you just saw me do so I'm gonna speed it up a little bit as you know to not bore you to death but um, I also tend to on my gel top coat I like to cap the free edge. Now, specifically for me, because I use peel base, if I cap that free edge, it's just going to give me a little bit of extra security before these nails tend to, or the dip powder tends to lift off. Um, again, because I have peel base on. If you're not a peel base user, I still highly recommend capping your free edge. So your free edge where you just filed is just going to kind of allow for like a break in the seal between your nail and the dip powder application so just adding like a little bit of gel to that free edge is going to kind of seal it up and allow uh, more protection from moisture getting in there which moisture can cause um, what we like to refer to as a greeny so it's just kind of like a I think it's like a fungus technically but as soon as let's put it this way if you get a greenie under your dip powder it's not the end of the world it is going to leave like a green stain on your nail and you just have to wait for it to grow out but as soon as the air hits that it does kill off that fungus um, but nobody wants that green splotch on their nail so I highly recommend making sure that if you use well whatever top coat you use that you cap your free edge it's just going to help protect from that moisture getting in there because I don't think anybody is like wanting for a greenie on on their nail so cap that free edge it's just gonna help give you that extra security and seal from moisture and if you're using peel base then it's going to give you just that little bit of extra wear before that peel base starts to lift up so now I'm finishing up with that gel top coat I am gonna cure for 60 seconds now in my lamp which is pretty standard for any gel top coat in my experience and then we are done when those came out and I checked them out, first of all, so glossy. I touched them, there's no tacky finish. They are truly a no wipe top coat. Look at that shine. Oh my gosh, they are like a mirror reflecting my light. So, so gorgeous. So I'm gonna apply my cuticle oil. This cuticle oil came in a mystery box months ago from Gigi's Custom Dips. It's in a nice roller ball. I really like that. Um, and then I'm just gonna rub that into my cuticles. That's gonna help hydrate my skin and this, like the cuticle around my nail and underneath that free edge. I really like this, um, this cuticle oil. It was really nice and smooth. I'm not sure if it's available on the shop. Um, the website or she may have some other current scents. I'm not actually sure I should have checked before I spoke to this But if you have this cuticle oil on at hand 
use it. It's really nice. Um, but use any cuticle oil after a mani and just help your skin stay nice and hydrated and happy after all that we put it through when doing our nails. Look at that glow. I guess I didn't mention that this was a glow. You know how I love some glowing nails and I thought these turned out really pretty. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was definitely one of my favorites of recent manis and I will see you guys real soon in my next vid. Bye now.